BHS Sports TV and the Belmont Media Center are once again proud to bring you exclusive coverage of Belmont High School Varsity Football. Live from Harris Field in Belmont, it's the home opener for the Marauders who come into tonight's action at 1-1, one one, playing host to the Westford Academy Ghosts, who are also 1-1 one and one in play in the Dual County League. Good evening, everyone. I am Todd Blonier. So very glad that you could join us tonight on a beautiful late summer, early fall evening here in Belmont after temperatures topped out in the low 70s earlier today and probably aren't going to go much lower than say 60 degrees during the course of the game tonight. Always glad to have BHS Sports TV executive producer Jeremy Meserve on board as part of our production. He'll be running the camera and also doing some uh, coordinating of other live streaming productions here this evening. And uh, also alongside joining me on the broadcast tonight is BHS freshman and fellow BMC volunteer Aram Parnagian. Good to have you here tonight, Aram. Thank you, Todd. Very happy to be here. Looking forward to this. It looks like uh, Marauders uh, are going to be receiving the ball to start the game. I don't know if Westford won the toss and deferred, uh, but regardless, Belmont will have the ball uh, going from uh, right or from left to right here in the opening uh, 12 minutes. Uh, this is the third and final non-league game for the Marauders to open up the 2023 season. They won at Cambridge two weeks ago, 40 to 13. Lost last week at Shawshank Tech by a final of 21 to six. Brian McCray now in his third season as Belmont's varsity head coach, having taken over for Jan Kuhlman. Uh, coach McCray hoping the team can improve upon their back-to-back -back four and six records each of the last two seasons. If that's going to happen, Marauders offense is going to need to lead the way behind returning skill players like running back Adrian Garung and quarterback Jaden Arno. And Aram, appropriately enough, we're going to see the Marauders. Actually, we're going to see the Marauders kicking off. We will not see the offense first. <laughs> We had that wrong. I think the Marauders won the toss and deferred, so they'll be kicking off left to right in their maroon jerseys with the uh, maroon helmets and the white numbers on the backs. And Westford, uh, the Ghosts, formerly the Gray Ghosts, now a uh, little bit of a slight altering of the name. And uh, they're in their road whites with uh, maroon is one of their secondary colors and the gray pants. And here on the return, bringing this one back, number six, he's getting close to midfield. That would be Ryan Kyle a junior, and Westford will be starting off with some pretty good field position here in the opening quarter. Their uh, head coach of the Ghosts, Bruce Rich, he's in his third season, much like uh, Coach McCray is for the Marauders. Uh, coach Rich, a 16-8 and eight record. Uh, Ghosts, uh, last two seasons, uh, or the first two seasons of the Coach Rich regime, eight and three and seven and four, and they come into tonight one and one having uh, beaten Lowell opening week, and then they lost uh, to Bill Ricca last week. Here is a, a quick toss out in the flat, and it will be caught, and extra yardage after the catch. Catch made uh, on the uh, far side. The quarterback uh, is one of the uh, six captains for the Ghosts. His name is Jake Cullen, a senior. And on the uh, far side, it's gonna be close to a first down. Got about nine yards on the play. Ball up close to midfield for Westford. Call it, we'll call it second and two. As the Ghosts are on the 49, they need to get to the 49 of Belmont to get a first down. Cullen's gonna call his own number this time. Looks like he's got the first down as he uh, got right about to the marker and then pushed back by a swarm of Belmont defenders, helping out on the, uh, the play for Belmont uh, number 58. Evan Muriel in 54, uh, one of the six Belmont captains, Ryan Halloran. So that will be good for a Westford first down on the Belmont 49. A drive that started uh, for Westford off the return. They uh, started this drive on their own 41-yard uh, line. So as we said, the uh, quarterback is Cullen, and he's in the shotgun. He'll hand off to the running back. I believe that might be... Jamison Moran, also listed in the Boston Globe as Jesse Moran, so I'm not sure which name he goes by, Aram, but uh, he is a junior and he has actually stopped for no gain. It is Jesse. Oh, thank you. Okay, we got a confirmation from a Westford fan who's here tonight. It is Jesse Moran. I have him listed on the roster as Jamison, so that's why we were. Jesse's more of the name he goes by commonly, so we'll go by Jesse here as well. No gain for Moran on the uh, the first down carry. Second and 10 
Westford at the Belmont 49. And once again, here's Cullen in the shotgun with time. And the ball goes right through the hands of Ryan Kyle, the uh, junior receiver, and also uh, had the, uh, the big return for uh, Westford to uh, start things off. Early thoughts here, Aaron, what, you're, uh, what you see out here from uh, these two teams? Big, uh, big third down coming yeah. up for the Belmont defense. Got to get off the field. Great teams get off the field. We'll see if they can do that here. Uh, third down. Marauders have 18 seniors on the team this year. But uh, this is one of the uh, smaller Belmont rosters in recent memory. Only 31 upperclassmen. That'd be sophomores, juniors, and seniors. That pass incomplete. Was looking for uh, Jesse Moran. Ball was a little bit high. And so the Marauders defense holds. It's gonna be fourth and 10. And here comes the uh, Westford punting unit. Marauders, we'll see the Marauders offense that we talked about at the top of the broadcast uh, here momentarily. I believe that is uh, number six, Ryan Kyle back to do the punting. I guess he does it all for uh, the Ghosts. Uh, had the return to start the game on the kickoff and he will send this punt down. Feel pretty good one. And it'll be taken back there by Lassiter. That is Austin Lassiter, another one of the uh, Marauder captains, and he'll get across the 20 to about the 21-yard line, and that is where the Marauders' offense is going to start off. Belmont's offense, oh, well, it may not start off there because it was a flag. Usually this is on the return team. This is, if you've watched enough football, Aaron, you know this is always on the return team, usually an illegal block of some sort. And Marauders appear to be backing up. And it is an illegal block in the back. So that'll uh, send the ball back probably to about the 10 yard line. Now the 11 is where they're gonna spot it. So first and 10 for Belmont from there. Their offense uh, looking uh, really good when they put up 40 points against Cambridge last week against a, uh, a, a bigger and a little more physically imposing uh, Shawshin Tech team. Marauders were only able to put up six points. So we'll see what uh, they can do tonight as a uh, Jaden Arno's in the shotgun. He's going to hand off to Adrian Garung. Garung, the senior, and again, another one of the six Marauder captains. Ran for over 1,200 yards and also scored 11 touchdowns last year. And he'll get a pickup of about uh, two or three on that first down carry. I was going to say, Aaron, were you coming to the uh, games much last year? Or you, yeah. You, you've seen Garung run mm -hmm. before. He's a very talented yeah. runner. And... Uh, really will be a big part of the Marauder offense this year, as, as will the quarterback, Jaden Arno. Third year as a starter, coinciding with the start of the uh, Brian McCray era here, uh, coaching at Belmont. Jaden Arno came right in as a sophomore, now a senior, and again, as we mentioned, one of the six captains. Second down, he's gonna hand off again to Garung who used to wear 23, I believe. Now he's wearing number one this year. Is uh, Maybe that's a sign of things. Maybe they're looking at him to be the number one part of the offense. He gets a couple more yards. Going to bring up about third and six here. As we said, Garung's had quite a career rushing the football for the Marauders. He is right now set to the left of Jaden Arno, who's in the shotgun. Brian Logan, another, another Belmont captain, is a split to the near side. And it'll be a throw to the far side. It will be caught there by Austin Lassiter. Lassiter is close to the first down marker, and I believe he's got it. Nice uh, catch and run there by Austin Lassiter. So we mentioned one of the six captains. Uh, the captains, Jaden Arno, Adrian Garung, Brian Logan, Bryce Hubbard, Austin Lassiter, and Ryan Halloran. Congratulations to all of them for uh, being captains this year. And I believe they are all seniors. And they are, actually. Uh, it's not always the case. Sometimes a junior will slip in there. In fact, I think uh, Jaden Arno was a junior, was a captain last year for the Marauders. Marauders have to punt here, though, on fourth down. Uh, no, they're saying fourth and inches. I guess they didn't make it. Looks like Marauders are going for it, though, on fourth and about a yard. No, I'm sorry. They are kicking. Here's the uh, the kick away by Wyatt Sclafani, number 12, and he will get it close to midfield and almost to about the spot where the Westford offense uh, 
stalled out on their first possession. They'll be starting at their own 48-yard line. 6.57 to go here in the opening quarter. No score. Both teams have had a possession. Both teams got, uh, well, actually, in the case of the Marauders, it was a three and out. Westford did pick up one first down before they had to punt. But right now, so far, the Ghosts are winning the battle of the field position. You know, it looked like on that third down play, Aram, I thought uh, Lasseter was going to get the spot there, but yeah. apparently they, they said too. He came up a yard short. Now on the first down carry, uh, that was uh, number one carry in the ball, Alex Wilson. He's one of uh, the Westford captains. Listed on the uh, roster, too. He's a junior and uh, wide receiver. Expected to be a big part of the, uh, the Ghosts' offense this year. For those of you not familiar with Westford, they're... they're uh, it's about 20, about 20, 25 miles west of Belmont. Sandwiched between routes two and three on the, uh, the Interstate 495 belt. And even though these teams are about 25 miles apart, last week they were they played about five miles apart from each other. Marauders, as we mentioned, were playing Shawshin Tech uh, High School located in Bill Ricca. And these Westford Ghosts were playing at Bill Ricca High School, where they also lost. Uh, neither school, uh, both Belmont and Westford, not, uh, were probably glad to get out of Bill Ricca. Yeah. Neither one of them <laughs> were victorious there last week. So uh, both looking to uh, correct things this week. We have an early timeout, 6.17 to go. Here in the opening quarter, here as we are uh, bringing you this broadcast from the 617 area code in Belmont. So... Uh, So, Aram, some uh, some early thoughts here. Uh, I mean, what do you uh, what do you think uh, the Marauders are going to be able to do uh, this season? Uh, great things, great things, as you see from this defense, very very strong, especially when they blitz. Yeah, we're going to have to watch for that a little bit. We've seen we haven't seen a, a sack yet. They were very strong on the blitz though last year, Aram. You, it's a good point. Uh, they were able, uh, when they were at their best, they were getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. This is second down, pass goes to uh, Kyle in the flat and he'll be close to the first down. So far both teams kind of just using that little swing pass out. Nobody, uh, look, neither quarterback's looking deep down the field here. And they're gonna mark that a little bit short of the first down, probably by a couple of yards at the uh, Belmont 43 or 44 yard line. Of course, one way you can combat the blitzing is to just, you know, throw the little quick short passes into the flat. And that might be what uh, Coach Rich is going to have uh, his quarterback, Jake Cullen, do tonight. Marauders can bring it. They've uh, got, of course, uh, uh, Ryan Halloran, who plays on the offensive and defensive lines. We've got a false start there on Westford, so that'll turn a, a third and two into third and seven. Of course, another big part of the uh, the front line uh, for the Marauders uh, defensively, Harrison Carlson, number 77, another senior. So now fourth and seven, might, or third and seven, I should say, for Westford. This will change things up, and maybe we'll see the Marauders uh, defense uh, blitz here. Assistant coaches under uh, Coach McRae include Francois Joseph, Carlo Ferrante, Chris Ward, Brian Connolly, Chris Clark, Craig Kanjigian, uh, Bob Goody, and Danielle Pergola. Here's a, a third down play, and it's going to be stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the Marauders. And again, it's senior captain Ryan Halloran in there leading the charge, making the stop. No gain. So it'll be fourth and seven for Westford at uh, the Belmont 49, and they will uh, punt once again, second time they're, they've gotten to this point in the field, Aram, and have not been able to uh, move any further as Austin Lasseter will go back inside his 20 and wait for the kick. So there is the punt. Calls for fair catch. And he did. Yeah. Right so. around the 10, at the 10 actually. Pretty good hang time there from Kyle. So Marauders uh, will uh, have the ball uh, at their own 10 yard line with 4.24 to go here in a scoreless first quarter. I think 
uh, would probably be good here. See the Marauders uh, hopefully get a first down. May, if nothing else, kind of just to change yeah. up the field position here since so far they've been kind of pin, pinned back in their own end. Yeah, that big kick return at the start of the game really killing them now. Marauders spread out. Two receivers split to each side. Handoff on the uh, the counter goes to Garung, who will get uh, probably about five yards up to the 15-yard line. So far, just one pass attempt for uh, Jaden Arno. That was uh, the, the quick little uh, dump pass to Lasseter on the uh, third down play on the first possession. I think they're trying to get Garung established here early on. It's like a gain of six. They're going to mark it at the 16-yard line. That'll make it second down and four. Marauders have, uh, once again, it's Brian Logan split to the near side. Looks like Lassiter is in the uh, far side slot. And here's another handoff to Garung again going up. Oh, he breaks a tackle. Garung's in the open field. We've seen this before. Adrian Garung into Westford territory, still going. And all the way down inside the Westford Academy 30-yard line. Big run by Adrian Garung, the senior captain. And what else is new when it comes to his talents? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 Marauders, so that'll flip the field position immediately. As the ball now sits at the Westford 28 yard line. You know, when they run Garung to the uh, far side too, sometimes he gets lost in amongst the tackles and you can't uh, see him. Here's a uh, pass this time coming to the near side, Bryce Hubbard, another Belmont senior captain with the reception. And he'll get out of bounds, gain of uh, about five. Bring up second down and five. Well, you know, Aram, that's exactly, too, why I think they wanted, you know, we kept seeing uh, Jaden Arno just handing the ball off to Garung because they want to get him going. They know that he's certainly capable of breaking one at any time, and he, he did uh, right there. That was about a 50-yard run, uh, probably closer to 60 yards. Now they go to him again. This time gets just barely across the line of scrimmage, so it'll bring up third down. Yeah, and a beautiful evening here in Belmont. Uh, happy you could join us. Uh, we are uh, broadcasting live on uh, Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 29 here in Belmont. And also, of course, you could be watching the live stream from anywhere at belmontmedia.org slash public TV. Got two live streams going tonight. Jeremy Meserve is uh, producing them both. But he can only be in one place. He's running camera for us and just keeping tabs, making sure the other stream is going, I'm sure. I think they call that multitasking. Jeremy does that very well, though. He's an expert multitasker. Here's a third down. Garung gets the handoff again, nice. going right up the middle, which has been all of his runs tonight. They have him running kind of right through the middle of the line, hoping he'll kind of bounce off some tackles. I think he's going to be a little short of the yeah. first down this time, Aram. Fourth and two coming up, and they're going to keep the offense on the field. Probably a good idea here, given the field position. I don't know who the uh, kicker is this year for the Marauders. So. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, where the ball is here, this is good four down territory, so why not? Fourth and, uh, like you said, two, maybe a long two, and uh, it is uh, Jaden Arno in the shotgun. Logan and Lassiter are split here to the near side. Bryce Hubbard and, uh, can't make out the guy, I always can't make out the receiver on the far side. Throw it, catch, it was dropped. It was dropped by Logan who would have had the first down, but he could not hold on. There was some tight coverage there by the Ghost defenders. And uh, that will be a turnover on downs for the Marauders. Donovan Hall Hallway is the, uh, was the receiver lined up on the far side, number five. He is a, also a senior. So Westford's going to take over here, first and 10 at their own 20. Not a bad play call there. I mean, they went to the uh, you know little inside slant, uh, but Logan was well covered and uh, got a hand on it, but just couldn't hold on. So now here's a long pass downfield. That's going to be caught for a first down and more. That is number eight, Quinn Reynolds, junior wide receiver, making the uh, catch and uh, getting first down yardage. First uh, time we've seen either quarterback go downfield. 
with the throw. Cullen uh, had a nice uh, touch on that pass and a gain of, uh, we'll say, uh, about 16 yards up to the 36-yard line. Actually, they're spotting at the 37. So gain of 17 on that uh, first play on this drive for Westford. Here's Cullen trying to escape the rush, and he does. He'll keep it. He will ahead, turn the corner, and he'll have another first down. Knocked out of bounds by a combination of uh, Bryce Hubbard and Ryan Halloran. Of course, many of the Marauders uh, playing on defense as well as offense, and probably not surprising given the size of the uh, roster this year. But uh, that also becomes a factor when you are uh, working with a smaller roster that, uh, you know, will these players be able to sustain the energy for four quarters? First and 10 on back-to-back -back, uh, first down plays by the Ghosts of Westford Academy. They have the ball on the Belmont 46. Cullen's gonna roll out, throw, and he's got another open receiver. That'll be caught. Another first down, that's Alex Wilson. A junior captain, and he's down inside the 30-yard uh, line as the Ghosts have seemed to have figured out something with the Belmont defense and have uh, been able to find some openings. Three consecutive plays of 10-plus yards. And just like that, Westford going from their own 20 all the way uh, just outside the Belmont 30. That's about 50 yards of offense, and I think uh, Coach Brian McRae will take this opportunity to let us all know it's the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Westford's been rolling out their quarterback this drive, and it's working, making plays. It definitely is. So that is the end of the first quarter. No score. Westford, though, on the uh, move here. They'll uh, will switch ends, and they'll be uh, have a first down at the Belmont 31 when we return. So, Aram, how long have you? So you've been uh, you just started volunteering yeah. at the Belmont Media Center. Yeah, it's my first game commentating. Oh, Very well, excited. Okay, good, great. You, you, is, is like football one of your favorite sports? Yes. Are you hoping to like cover some other sports too? Or uh, I'm mostly doing soccer, so later in October I'll get some soccer games. Now what sports have you played? Uh, um, I play soccer and I'm gonna join the wrestling and rugby team for Belmont. Oh, okay, wow, well the rugby team, that's a very yeah. successful program here. A lot of state championships uh, <laughs> for both the uh, boys and girls rugby teams. So uh, have a bit to, uh, bit to live up to there with the fine tradition of players. So anyway, we've got a uh, first and 10 coming up here for Westford. We said on the Belmont 31 yard line, this is uh, Westford's third series of the game. And I, I, honestly, uh, you know, the first two drives, they had great field position both times and couldn't do anything. And this time started at their 20, and they've uh, picked up almost 50 yards of offense on three plays. Quarterback Jake Cullen in the uh, shotgun. He's going to keep it himself. Roll out to the left side and uh, probably pick up about uh, five or six yards on that play. Wyatt Sclafani. And on the tackle, as you heard the uh, dulcet tones of public address announcer Al Gledhill. Longtime PA announcer here at Harris Field. Gain of five. Second down and five here for the Ghosts of Westford Academy. Cullen again, and he'll roll out this time and pass a little bit high for Wilson. Incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Rodgers not getting a lot of a pass rush here, which might be a, a little concerning. I mean, line of scrimmage, especially at the high school level, Aram, always a key. You, you like to watch for that earlier. You see him, the defensive line able to bust through, or is the line protecting the quarterback so far? Cullen, particularly on this drive, has had a lot yeah. of time to throw. Well, quarterback needs time to make plays. That's what Westford's giving their quarterback today. He certainly does. Third down and five. And uh, Cullen with a little pump fake, he'll throw incomplete. He was looking for uh, Nick Russo, a senior captain and wide receiver. Fourth down, and looks like Westford's offense is staying on the field. Not much kicking in high school. No, there really isn't. I mean, unless you just, if you're fortunate enough to have a really talented kicker, I know Belmont in some previous years had some uh, pretty good kickers who were capable of hitting. Uh, 40, 50 yarders. Kieran Core of uh, Winchester High School is very talented. Uh, 
Uh, he's looking at a, a college kicking career, and uh, he's probably one of the few kickers in the Middlesex League. That ball caught right at the first down marker. Let's see where they spot that. Although it looks like on the far side, they are moving the chains. First down, Westford on the fourth down and five pickup. Catch made by number eight, Quinn Reynolds. Ball is inside, uh, just inside the Belmont 20 yard line. Westford's strength this year uh, definitely uh, is in their passing game with uh, returning quarterback Jake Cullen and also many of the wide receivers, kind of similar to uh, Belmont with Arno and all the uh, receivers that are uh, back for another year. Here's a throw off, kind of off the back foot. There was some pressure there that time from Harrison Carlson. Pass deflected by Bryce Hubbard. And uh, nice play uh, defensively there on both ends by the Marauders. They break it up. So it'll be second down and 10. Clock stopping on the incomplete pass with 10.28 to go here in the second quarter. So as we mentioned, uh, Westford, uh, like Belmont, coming into this game at one and one. And uh, in week one, they defeated Lowell by a score of 22 to nothing. Then uh, losing last week at Bill Ricca, 35 to seven. This is the second straight road game for the Ghosts. Long toss down the field and it's caught and it looks like it's gonna be a touchdown. For the Ghosts, Jake Cullen looking and I, I believe that's number six, Ryan Kyle. Might also, might be number eight. From the far side, I can't tell if that's a six or an eight. I think it's a six. I think that's gonna be Kyle. Uh, both Kyle and uh, Reynolds have been both part of the uh, the offense. And in fact, I believe it is, uh, I believe that was Ryan Kyle because he's running out there to, uh, to kick the extra point. So Kyle gets the touchdown reception, oh. except they're gonna go for two. And they are stopped. And they are stopped, so only six for Westford, but they do uh, score first here. That score coming with 10.21 to go in the second quarter on the, uh, it was about a 16-yard uh, touchdown pass from quarterback Jake Cullen uh, to junior receiver Ryan Kyle. He's already had quite the game for himself, Aaron. He had the big kickoff return to start the game. He's punting. Uh, we saw him out there lined up to place kick, and he's uh, had a couple receptions, that last one for a touchdown. Do it all guy for Westford. Really <laughs> making himself known today. So now we'll uh, see if uh, the Marauder offense can answer 6-0. And it will be, uh, as we said, all, Mr. All-Purpose Man, Ryan Kyle, number six, getting ready to kick off. Deep downfield for the Marauders. To the near side, it's number 20, Austin Lasseter. To the far side, number 12, Wyatt Sclafani. A name that sounds just as it is spelled. <laughs> we, saw, we saw Wyatt's mom a little earlier tonight. So, so uh, hello to uh, Mrs. Sclafani. And I believe Wyatt's grandmother is uh, watching this game uh, on the stream right now, belmontmedia.org slash public TV. I say all that, and of course the kick goes to Austin Lassiter, who gets smacked and then uh, falls forward uh, across the 20-yard line. Nice job by Lassiter to hold on to the football after taking that hit. And uh, he's getting up a little, well, actually he's not getting up yet. Uh, he is down on the field. To, Training staff out there. And it looks like he is uh, getting to his feet. And Lassiter will be, uh, well, he won't need, uh, he'll be able to get off the field under his own power, which is good. Lassiter, one of the uh, smaller marauders out there so uh but showing you how tough he is there taking that uh, hit on the kickoff return holding on to the football and then walking off the field so hopefully uh, we will see him in just a bit Oops. 
Let's see, Marauders are going to start this first and 10. Uh, actually, it looks like there may have been a penalty on the Marauders, and in fact, there was on the return. So this will start back at the 13-yard line. 10-10 to go here in the first half. The very talented Belmont Marching Band, uh, always doing a good job. They'll, of course, uh, entertain us at the, during the uh, halftime show as they do for the crowd here at Harris Field. And uh, they always sound crisp and they've got good tunes and usually uh, they would like to play music from all eras, all decades. So uh, we'll, we'll see. I know last year they had like a Motown medley. I'll see what the... They've got planned for uh, this year. Well, now they put the now they move the ball back, so it's a little bit of confusion by the officials here. It was something about the penalty being declined? I think what happened was there was a penalty on the Marauders, but for some reason Westford is declining the penalty. Now they got the ball back at about the uh, marker where Lassiter got tackled. Probably would have helped if I had like watched the official to see what he was calling. But uh, I think they're at the 23. Of course, the, right now all the officials are having a conference to try to make sure everyone's uh, on the same page, and uh, it's going to be first and 10. Yeah, they've got the yeah. You said the 33, right? Is 23. The, 23, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's right. 23-yard line is where the Marauders are going to start this drive. First and 10. So no penalty. Which is a break for the Marauders here. Number three, Jaden Arno. Gets to the huddle, which really wasn't a huddle. He already knows what plays are going to be called, and he, the offense will be ready for it. Got two receivers again split here to the near side, the short side, while uh, only one receiver on the far side. Here's Gurung, and Gurung's going to be caught in the backfield for a loss. Do not tell me that is, uh, no, actually, I thought for a minute it was, uh, I think that was Christopher Butts, number nine, a junior. For a minute, I was about to say, I thought that was number six, Ryan Kyle, again. Like, is there anything he can't do? So it'll be a loss of... Looks like about three or four yards for Garung. Second down and 14. Ball at the 19 yard line. Usually this is where you might see a little bit of a screen, some short pass to the flat. Instead, it will be another handoff to Garung, who's certainly capable of breaking one at any time, as we saw earlier. And he gets back the lost yardage and a few more yards on top of that. Bring up about a third and seven for the Marauders. They're calling it third and eight. Marauders have to get to the 33 yard line to pick up a first down and keep this drive going. I think the Marauders might have just the one first down uh, so far on that big uh, run of almost 60 yards by Garung uh, earlier. They haven't had any good field position all game. Here we go, Big down throw. field looking and it's batted away. Pass was intended for Isaiah Ars Vallone. It was broken up by number one Alex Wilson. So the ball was slightly underthrown, so that's going to bring up fourth down and eight and Marauders are going to have to punt here. And I think if we want to know who the uh, Marauders, I mean we can probably guess uh, that the Marauders' place kicker is probably the same person who punts, because in, in high school that's typically what they do. They do both, and I believe that is a Sclafani again. Wyatt Sclafani, number 12, is back there to punt. The return man for Westford standing at his own 45-yard line. Sclafani uh, angles that kick over to the far side. Good kick. It's going to take a roll, and it'll go out of bounds at about the... Uh, out of bounds at the 45, which is exactly where the return man was standing. That would have been uh, Ryan Kyle. So again, now we're back to this field position that Westford had earlier, Aram, where now they've got great field position and they uh, currently lead 6-0. When they had good field position earlier in the game, they couldn't do anything with it, so. Yeah, it is kind of strange. Their one touchdown was on a long drive, uh, almost like length of the field. Uh, they started at their 20 and went 80 yards for the uh, the score on the TD pass from 
Cullen to Kyle. Cullen is going to hit. No, it's a flea flicker. It's back to Cullen, who's going to go deep downfield. He's got an open receiver, and it's dropped. I think that was Quinn Reynolds, number eight, and he probably was already thinking about the touchdown because he really got well behind the Belmont defenders, and he just dropped the ball. Huge break for Belmont, second and ten. You think... Uh, you think Quinn Reynolds is going to be thinking about that yeah. one uh, in his sleep tonight? <laughs> going to haunt him for days. Mm. Appropriate <laughs> enough since he's a ghost, as are the uh, the whole Westford team. Mentioned earlier, they, uh, years ago, I mean, I remember, boy, a long, many moons ago, I, I called a game at Westford Academy. Uh, when they were uh, known as the Grey Ghosts uh, a couple seasons ago, they've uh, they changed the name, got a new logo, which looks very ghostly. Now it's uh, second down, and uh, Cullen's going to keep it, and he runs right into number 33, Jadia Chauvet, who makes the tackle. And there's a flag on the play. There is, and this time I'm going to watch the official, and we're going to find out exactly what it is. Looks face like mask. Be, yeah, it is. Face mask against Belmont. Personal foul. That'll be 15 yards. I'm going to guess that might have been on Chauvet, who might have grabbed the face mask of quarterback Jake Cullen on that tackle. So that will help out the uh, the Ghosts as they will uh, march that ball. And, of course, it'll be a spot foul from where the uh, infraction took place. So that'll be uh, down to the Belmont 34-yard line off the personal foul, 15-yard penalty. So first and 10 for Westford from there. Quick handoff goes to Wilson, uh, coming around uh, this side, and he gets nothing. Nice job there, uh, Donovan Holway, senior. Saw him lined up earlier at receiver, that time uh, making a nice tackle on defense. In the uh, Boston Globe preseason capsule, one of the concerns they uh, mentioned for the Marauders uh, this year was over, was depth, but I think specifically on defense uh, was the uh, the concern. Marauders do though uh, present some uh, strong defenders here uh, in their rather uh, starting defensive unit. Here's the uh, pass throw; it'll be incomplete. Good defense there from the Marauders. Wilson was the intended receiver and that was Brian Logan to break it up. And of course, Logan using his height there. I don't have the heights this year, but I know, he, I think he goes like about 6'3", and he uses, he's got the long arms too. Well, he used all that to his advantage on that play. So it'll be third down. Third and 12, I think. Third and 12, they're calling it 13 on the oh. scoreboard. Ball is uh, sitting at the uh, Belmont 37. Kind of in that territory where this is probably four down territory, so Westford may not be thinking about trying to get all the yards on this one play. And it'll be a pass to the flat, and it's Wilson, and Wilson's gonna break one tackle. There's a flag thrown here on the near side. Tackle made on the far side was short of the first down, but let's await the penalty. Looks like, it, I think they're saying, I'm seeing a motion for holding. Of course, the holding took place far away from where the pass was actually thrown uh, to the far side. And it will be offensive holding. So uh, that will uh, march the Ghosts back. Of course, sometimes you wonder, Aram, on plays like that, when the play, when the holding takes place nowhere near where the actual offensive play was run. It's one of those, I'm sometimes, I'm surprised the officials don't like pick up the flag and not call it. But in this case, it is a break for the Marauders. So. Long third down for Westford. Very long, <laughs> calling it third and 23 and ball all the way out now at the uh, Belmont uh, 47. Just inside the 47. Yeah, I think they've got to, yeah, Westford's got to get to the 24-yard line of Belmont now for a first down. This may very well be four-down territory, as I don't think uh, there's a play for 23 yards. But no, I say as I say that, Cullen's going deep. He's got a man, and it's incomplete. Again, good coverage down there, that time by Sclafani. 
intended receiver. I don't know, was that, that was either uh, Carl or uh, Reynolds again, or Kyle or Reynolds, I should say. It's, uh, looks like that was number eight. That was Quinn Reynolds who dropped what looked like could have been a, a touchdown pass earlier. And uh, Jay Cullen uh, not wanting to give up on his uh, receiver. He uh, looked for him again deep down the field. That time he was uh, well covered, however. Fourth down and it will be a punt. Carl will boot this one away and it looks like it's gonna go into the end zone for a touchback. So we've got 6.02 to go here in the first half and Westford uh, still leads 6-0. Belmont offense will take the field looking to tie or take the lead on this possession. So I was driving over here tonight, Aram. I heard uh, today is World Gratitude Day, and I'm very grateful for all the people who are checking out uh, tonight's uh, broadcast of uh, Marauder Football on belmontmedia.org slash public TV or on uh, Comcast or Verizon for all the people living in Belmont. My name's Todd Bloniars. He is Aram Carnegie, And Jeremy Meserve is running our camera here this evening. First and 10, Belmont at their own 20. Jaden Arno, the senior quarterback, rolls out to the right. He finds an open receiver. I'm going to guess that's Austin Lassiter. And he will uh, make his way out of bounds close to the first down marker. I say I'm going to guess it's Lassiter because he, uh, he seems to always be the smallest player out on the field. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Jaden Arno's uh, a bit diminutive himself. Lassiter will check out on the play. It's good to see Austin Lassiter back in the game, though, here uh, after he got uh, knocked uh, pretty hard on an uh, earlier kickoff return. Isaiah Arsvalone will uh, check in for Lassiter on the second and two play. Rodgers and uh, Coach Brian McRae employing that spread offense. Two receivers are split here to the near side. Logan is closest to us. Uh, Bryce Hubbard in the uh, near side slot. It'll be a handoff to Adrian Garung. He needs two. He's going to get two and a little bit more. And I, did they throw a late flag in there? They did. Okay, I thought I saw something get tossed. I couldn't tell if it was uh, if it was yellow or not. I kind of got blinded by the light there for a moment. A la Manfred Mann or Bruce Springsteen, take your choice uh, for those of you uh, old enough to remember those artists. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's going to be a personal foul on Westford. So much as the Marauders did on Westford's last offensive drive, now the Ghosts return the favor. They commit an offensive foul. And Marauders are going to get 15 extra yards tacked on here. And a, a first down all the way up to their own 44. Now it's three receivers split uh, all to the near side. And Arno looking, he'll go far side though. Looking over there is I believe that might be Logan. Ryan Logan going far side that time, kind of an isolated coverage and he'll get about six or seven yards. Clock continues to run. 4-13, 4-12 remaining here in the first half. Marauders down 6-0. They will give Logan seven yards on that reception. So second and three ball now in Westford territory at the 49. It's going again to the uh, to the far side. That ball was batted in the air by a Westford defender and then almost caught over there anyway by Logan. But there was also a lot of traffic there and uh, ultimately uh, Logan could not hang on. I think someone might have gotten a hand on it as it was close to him. So it's going to bring up third down. Two receivers split here to the near side. Lassiter started in the slot. He'll then take the handoff. I, or no, it was a no, it was a fake handoff to Lassiter. I think they handed it off to Garung. A little uh, misdirection there. Did not fool the Ghosts, however. They make the stop, and the Marauders actually lost a couple of yards on the play, and it will bring up fourth down. So we approach three and a half minutes to go until halftime, and the Marauders will have to punt this one away. A good kick and uh, 
some strong special teams, and Marauders can hopefully uh, pin Westford down uh, deep in their own territory here. Wyatt Sclafani, the uh, junior, is back to punt. And I believe, once again, that's Ryan Kyle, except we're going to have a flag uh, delay of game, I would assume, here. And that's exactly what it is. Play clock ran out on the Marauders. Not always the worst penalty to take here at this part of the field, Aram, because you you know you still got uh, you're not pinned back and give your punter a little extra room. Maybe they were hoping uh, they could draw Westford offside. It was fourth down and you know five. So if you get him to jump, then it's a first down. But uh, Westford, uh, the ghosts would not bite. Here's a line drive punt as the uh, as Westford uh, rushed that one. It'll be taken by Carl on a couple of bounces. He eludes one tackler and then is taken down at the 30-yard line. So that is where Westford will start this next drive. 2.51 to go here in the first half. Westford six and Belmont nothing. So any other ob uh, observations here to make, uh, Aram, is... Uh, we see the Marauder defense uh, try to make another big stop here? Or? Very good. Getting pressure to the quarterback, but the quarterback just getting the ball out before they can get to him. No sacks today. Once again, Westford rolling out. Yep, and Cullen throws the ball, and he was looking. It's uh, incomplete. He was looking uh, here near side for Nick Russo, who has so far not had a catch. He's been thrown to a couple of times, so he's second down and 10 from there. Rodgers uh, will begin Middlesex League play next week as they are members of the Liberty Division. They'll be on the road playing at Winchester, and then uh, in two weeks they will be back here for their uh, Middlesex League home opener. That'll be against the Minutemen of Lexington High School. And we'll have that one for you here on the uh, BHS Sports TV's coverage. Uh, short game there. Uh, I think Cullen kept that. And we're going to get a timeout taken by the Marauders with 2.34 to go. Third down and looks like seven upcoming for Westford. Uh, big uh, play here for the Belmont defense, which is why Coach McCray uh, called timeout here. I mean, Marauders do certainly, there's enough time here, Aram, in the uh, first half. Marauders could get the ball back, get some decent field position, maybe uh, have a chance to, uh, to tie up the ball game before halftime. Yeah, and they get the ball back to start the second half, so maybe two for one. That is true, yes. Yeah, though, the old uh, uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots were notorious for uh, doing that, the old double dip, as I like to call it. You score before the half, and then you take the opening kickoff, and you score again. At this point, I think we will take uh, any points the Marauders can uh, score. They've been held off the scoreboard so far, offense... Uh, had the big run from Garung. Uh, hasn't been really a lot of other big plays uh, for Belmont so far in this one, but still plenty of time. Third and seven for Westford at their own 33, so they need to get to the 40 for a first down. Cullen has uh, three receivers, two are split here to the near side. A little bit of pressure that time on Cullen and the Pass downfield incomplete. Sclafani in coverage on Ryan Carl. And uh, might have been William Hendrickson, number 11 back there. Number 10, was it 10 or 11? Could have been Hubbard, too. Actually, I think it was Hubbard. Number 10 back there applying a little bit of pressure. And I saw a second Marauder back as well. So this is going to force a Westford Academy punt on fourth and seven. And so the Marauders will get the ball back here with... Uh, over two minutes to go, and a chance to uh, to pick up some points before halftime, although this will take a very friendly ghost roll. Very Casper-like there, and the uh, ball is downed at the 21 of Belmont. That's where the Marauders will start. 2.17 to go till halftime. Glad you're enjoying our live stream tonight. When halftime uh, 
comes along here at Harris Field, you can always go check out the other live stream going tonight at uh, belmontmedia.org slash infotv. Uh, Belmont Volleyball taking place inside the Winter Fieldhouse. That is going on concurrent to uh, our efforts here outdoors. So you can check them out, give them, give them your Marauder love, uh, and then come back to us uh, at the end of halftime. Here's a uh, pass out in the flat. It'll be caught there by Bryce Hubbard. Hubbard will uh, get the first down and get out of bounds. Jaden Arno and Marauder offense like to employ that little just short, quick pass. Looking for uh, Hubbard, who's got some speed. Austin Lasseter with speed. They get to the outside and uh, you know outrun the defense. It's a first down at the 35-yard line. Westford was showing some blitz, and now uh, Lasseter will uh, come in motion and then line up here in the uh, near side. Double slot near side for the Marauders this time. It's, uh, it's Lassiter and Bryce Hubbard both set up with, uh, I believe that's Holway is the, uh, the receiver. Watch out, Logan in isolation on the far side of the field. That might be where Arno's gonna go, but he's chased out of the pocket, so he'll run. Jaden Arno, we know he can run, and he gets almost the first down for the Marauders to about the 44 yard line. Good running there. Uh, some good pressure coming from the Ghosts of Westford Academy. I, I think it, it did look like Arno wanted to throw it to Logan far side, but that play never materialized, and Arno did what he also can do very well and use his legs to pick up some yardage. He's going to be third or second and short here. Now Belmont in the hurry up. And here's the handoff to Garung. He'll have the first down. He'll be across midfield into Westford territory. Still going, and he's down to the 43-yard line. Another strong run from Adrian Garung, who uh, will uh, be probably at this point, uh, might be closing in on 100 yards in this first half. A lot of them came on that one big uh, run he had of about 60 yards in the uh, first quarter. A minute 27, clock continues to run here. Like you said, Aram, the Marauders are in the hurry up with Jaden Arno in the shotgun. He looks to Coach McCray on the sideline. Coach McCray, of course, uh, calls the offense for the Marauders. Gets the play in to Jaden Arno. Arno will hand it off to, no, uh, you know, he kept it himself. Boy, that was a good fake. I thought Garung had it, but uh, Arno kept it, rolled out to the right. And then Marauders are gonna call a timeout as Arno gains about four, we'll say five yards. They've got the ball marked at the Westford 39 yard line with 58 seconds to go here in the first half. Good looking drive here uh, by the Marauders. Uh, started pretty deep in their own end, but uh, moving the ball upfield there. Yeah. Quick, quick big plays. Only four plays and they're already on Westford's side of the field. Up into the 40, so. And again, part of what their offense can do well uh, you know, with Jaden Arno, he can hand off to Garung, and of course the defense has to zone in on that because Garung is such a strong runner. But as we've seen, and we've seen this through uh, his three years as the starting quarterback for the Marauders, Jaden Arno also can run. And, and that's you saw that on the earlier play when he got flushed out of the pocket and uh, just took off and started running. I mean, it's, it's great to have a quarterback who can do those things. He's got a good arm, but when needed, he can also take off and pick up yards that way. Trying to cap off a, uh, a, a great uh, career here at uh, Belmont, Jaden Arno, and also hoping, uh, Marauders hoping they can uh, improve upon uh, their record of the past two seasons. Marauders uh, four and six in uh, each of the first two seasons under Coach McRae. One and one coming into tonight's action. And looking to bounce back after their loss at Shawshin Tech last week. So it's second down and five. Ball at the Westford 39-yard line. And here's Arno rolling out. He'll fire. It's caught. I believe that was Austin Lasseter, and he uh, makes the catch in traffic amongst the bigs, and he'll get uh, brought down. It's good for a uh, Marauder first down. They'll spot the ball at the 33-yard line. They needed five. They got six. First and ten. Clock continues to, well, it stopped on the uh, quick uh, first down moving of the chains, and now here's... Uh, Arno, Arno still on his feet, eluding tackles. Look at Jaden Arno. 
close to another first down. And I think the Marauders will take another timeout here because uh, in high school football you get like about uh, about 75 timeouts a half. I, I kid. No, they get a lot. Though. I think they get five a half. And it feels like they always save them up for the end of the halves, which is smart. 33 seconds remain here. And it will be a second down upcoming for the Marauders. But uh, again, we're really seeing Jaden Arno's, uh, again, his legs and his feet are really kind of, uh, have been a big part of this whole drive running for a lot of these uh, yards so far. Dual threat quarterback and putting the legs to use. On that last run, we uh, dare uh, might say, uh, as Jaden Arno was eluding Westford defenders, he ain't afraid of no ghosts, right? <laughs> You knew I was going to work that in sometime tonight, all you people who know what I'm talking about. Got to get in the, uh, the the movie reference there. I know Jeremy enjoyed that one, right? Oh, I, I just said Jaden Arno ain't afraid of no ghosts, right? You, you didn't hear that. Okay. It's, Jeremy nods his head and then probably rolls his eyes at me like he's uh, want to do. Yes. I, he knows I got to work in a, a few good... Uh, puns or movie references or something. Uh, anyway, big uh, second down here. Or no, well, first down, check that. Yeah, that isn't right. No, they, they uh, picked up first down yardage on the... Uh, yeah, what? Well, they're saying first and 10 at the 33. Okay. No, I guess they, no, I guess they do have that right. I mean... First and 10 at the 33 for Belmont. Arno is in the shotgun. We've got 33 seconds left in the first half. Pass, far side, caught. That's Logan. They love getting Logan in that isolation to one side. They set all the other receivers up on the uh, opposite side. Get Logan in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Again, he's tall. He's got the long reach, and he's got good hands, and he uh, pulls that one in. Good for a Marauder first down inside the 15-yard line. Going to spot that at the 12, 27 seconds left as Logan was also able to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Belmont looking for their first points here tonight and their first points at Harris Field here in this 2023 season. Right now trailing 6-0, but looking to tie things up before the half and uh, perhaps take the lead. We've got three receivers split to the near side. Logan, again, single coverage on the far side of the field. Keep an eye on that because uh, Jaden Arno's been going to... Uh, his uh, senior captain, of course, Arno, also a senior captain, and that's where Arno's gonna go. Far side, over the shoulder, caught! Touchdown, Marauders! Nope, they're gonna say caught it out of bounds. All right, well, again, that's what yeah, the, the old far side for you, right? We had to wait on that one. Uh, if this was only the Canadian Football League, Garum, that would have been good for a touchdown because, you know, the field's, you know, it's a little wider in Canada. They also have the goalposts at the front of the end zone. They do. That's because the end zones go 25 yards deep, not like a 10 yards here in the here in the U.S. of A. A. 21 seconds remaining here before halftime. It's going to be second down. It was really a perfect over-the-shoulder throw. The only thing that hurt uh, was uh, running out of uh, real estate over there. And now a throw and a touchdown! Back to Logan again! He cannot be stopped. Those two cannot be stopped. And the Marauders have tied the game with 15 seconds to go here in the first half. 12-yard touchdown pass from senior captain quarterback Jaden Arno to senior wideout and captain Brian Logan. And now it will be uh, number 20, Austin Lassiter, on to kick the extra point and give the Marauders the lead. The kick, line drive, it is up and good. So the Marauders take the lead with 15 seconds to go here in the first half. And uh, Jaden Arno was just determined on the end of that drive, Aram, to get the ball to his very tall and good-handed wide receiver, Brian Logan, and it finally paid off. Yeah, long drives have been paying off this game. Both of the touchdown drives for each team have been seven plays or longer. And that's odd because, you know, well, it's a little odd only in the sense that both teams have also had better and shorter fields and have not been able to put anything together. But, yeah, you, you, you pin them deeper downfield and they get the long drives going. 
I mean, that drive was really all about Jaden Arno. At the beginning of the drive, his running ability and able to, you know, make something out of nothing when he was getting flushed out of the pocket. And then at the end of it, it was just looking for his man, Brian Logan. And uh, after Logan made the great over-the-shoulder catch out of bounds on the first attempt, they went right back to him again. And so now Lassiter will uh, squib this one down the field and... Uh, the return man will fall down at the 40-yard line with 13 seconds left here in the first half. So the Marauders now leading 7-6. to six. Just want to play uh, some good defense for 13 seconds. Make sure they go into halftime with the lead here at Harris Field. Not sure what uh, Coach uh, Bruce, Bruce Rich has in mind here, if he's going to... Uh, have them take a knee or based on the offensive spread out here, uh, it looks like uh, they're going to try something deep down the field. Cullen does have an arm. He'll fire this one. It's going to be caught. And uh, not getting out of bounds was Alex Wilson. He did, I don't think he got out of bounds, but it, it might be a timeout. Actually, I guess, well, the temporary uh, stoppage because of the first down. And then on top of it, Coach Rich will take a timeout. So we got six seconds remaining. Ball's at the Belmont 45. And based on what we've seen so far tonight from uh, Jake Cullen, the Westford quarterback, Aram, I, I think, you know, you, you, we've seen some throws about 45, 50 yards downfield. So there's no doubt from this spot on the field he'd be able to get one into the end zone. And that's probably what they're going to try on this last play of the half. Yeah, well, they can't get much else. They only have six seconds left. No time for two plays. They only got to throw up the Hail Mary. Yeah, I mean, unless they wanted to throw something really quick to the sideline, but he probably wouldn't be able to gain very much uh, on that. So, yeah, I think we are looking at a Hail Mary attempt here to close out the first half. Marauders coming up big, though, on that last drive, which I think was uh, in the neighborhood of about 75 yards, and as you said, uh, over seven plays. So here we go. Let's see if Cullen's going to get some time. He's trying to buy some time. Looks like there might have been a hold there. Cullen gets hit. The ball's downfield. It's in the end zone. Knocked around. And caught. it's actually caught for a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. And if you want to talk about redemption, I believe that's number eight, Quinn Reynolds, who dropped what would have been a sure touchdown earlier tonight. And he makes the catch on the 45-yard heave by quarterback Jake Cullen, who got hit as he threw it. And for a minute, I didn't know if there was going to be enough on that to get it to the end zone. Wow. It looks like uh, the Ghosts are going to line up to kick the extra point here. And the kick is up and good by Ryan Kyle on the last play of the first half. So in 15 seconds, Westford goes 60 yards on two plays, capped off by the touchdown pass from Jake Cullen to Quinn Reynolds, who maybe he's gonna forget about that first pass play after that. Marauders looked like they had that play covered too, Aram. I mean, I saw a bunch of maroon jerseys. I don't know how in the world Reynolds snuck in behind him to make that catch. They outmanned them in the end zone just I don't know. Yeah. Wild. Anyway, we are at halftime here at Harris Field. It is Westford Academy 13, Belmont High School 7. We'll be back with second half coverage here on uh, BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football.
Welcome back to Harris Field and BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauders football. It is the home opener of the 2023 season. Belmont coming into the game at 1-1 one and, one and uh, looking to uh, win here at uh, Harris Field for the uh, first time this year. Currently trailing the 1-1 one one Westford Academy Ghosts by a score of 13-7. to seven. Todd Bologna is along with uh, Aaron Aram Parnagian and... Uh, Aaron, that was a crazy, I mean, it started off with we had not a whole lot of scoring or action, and then all of a sudden in the last minute we had two touchdowns. Three scoring drives back to back to back, and that Hail Mary really takes the wind out the sails there. Marauders looking like they're about to get a two for one and snatch right out their hands. Yeah, well, they could still get a two for one flipping back the other way, yeah. but yeah, as you said, the last three drives all ended in scores. Westford uh, jumped on top, uh, six nothing, missing the extra point. Then the Marauders in the... Uh, Final couple of minutes of the uh, first half, moved the ball down about 75 yards, uh, thanks to uh, Jaden Arm's legs and then his arm, finding Brian Logan for a 12-yard touchdown pass, which is 15 seconds left. They made the extra point, so they're up 7-6. Looked like with them get, the Marauders getting the ball to start the second half, great opportunity here uh, for the double dip. And you can still get the double dip, I suppose, but uh, it's a little harder when there's a uh, Hail Mary in the middle by uh, the other team. Westford, in just 15 seconds, goes 60 yards on two plays. 45-yard touchdown pass from Jake Cullen to, uh, to Quinn Reynolds. Uh, one of the uh, the big lanky receivers for the Ghosts, who earlier in the game was wide open. He got past two Marauders, was all alone at about the 15-yard line, could have caught the pass and walked into the end zone, and he just dropped it. It was right in his hands, and he gets a little bit of redemption there, catching a Hail Mary that was actually in traffic. Marauders had uh, pretty much their entire defensive unit down in the end zone. I saw a sea of maroon, and yet somehow Reynolds came up with the grab. So now the Marauders uh, hopefully can uh, answer that uh, score with one of their own here and retake the lead in what's uh, suddenly turning into a wild ball game. Jake Cullen, the Westford quarterback, displaying quite the arm as we kind of uh, uh, feared. I mean, we saw it earlier in the game and then it, um, that Hail Mary really paid off. So here's the kick and the Marauders getting the ball to start. The second half, it's Austin Lassiter, Lassiter on the far side. He's still going. Austin Lassiter up close to midfield before he's finally knocked out of bounds. 
Another big kick return to start the half. Westford had one to start the game. Now Belmont returns the favor. That's right, and maybe this means the field position will start leaning in the Marauders' favor as uh, senior captain Austin Lassiter, again, one of six Belmont senior captains, coming up with the big return there, showing the speed, going up the far side, and the ball just shy of midfield. Technically, the ball is in Marauder territory. Outside their own 49-yard line here to start the second half trailing by six. And it's uh, Jaden Arno in the shotgun and we'll keep an eye on Brian Logan, one of uh, Arno's favorite targets. He is currently split to the near side. Here comes Bryce Hubbard in motion. It's a pitch out to Adrian Garung who had a big run in the first half and probably had close to 100 yards rushing overall in that half. But this time he gets taken down by a swarm of ghosts. Uh, among them, uh, Jesse Moran and Chris Sell were in there to make the stop. It's a loss of about three. It's going to bring up second and 13. The rung is in the backfield with quarterback Jaden Arno, and Austin Lasseter, who just had the big kickoff return, lines up here to the near side along with Logan in kind of a tight formation on that side, and now he'll come in motion. It's a fake uh, to Lassiter. Handoff to Garung. Garung slides close to midfield, and it's going to end up being third down and 11. Certainly the Marauders would like to take advantage of this field position, Aram, and uh, you know get a first down. I mean, they, you, know, you don't want to like lose a great return that Lassiter just had. But how this game's going, field position doesn't really matter. <laughs> I guess it doesn't. You're right, because most of the touchdowns have been of the long drive variety and long passes. Austin Lasseter, of course, the younger brother of Gordon Lasseter, a former Belmont Marauder who played back in the uh, Jan Cuman era when he was coaching here. And that pass uh, is incomplete over on the uh, near side to Logan. I mean, one of the things I'm seeing this year compared to last year, Logan had a, a really solid season from the Marauders last year, but the Marauders also had a senior captain at that time, Chris Cogliano, and it was him. It, you could see Logan and Cogliano kind of divvying up the catches, and uh, now with the Cogliano having graduated, uh, we're seeing a, a lot more of Arno going right to, uh, to Logan. It'll be interesting to see if the Marauders can develop like a secondary receiver to maybe... Uh, kind of free up Logan a little bit more uh, going forward. Right now it's a Wyatt Sclafani back to punt. So the Marauders unfortunately cannot take advantage of Austin Lasseter's return. And the punt by Sclafani will take a friendly Marauder roll and it will settle down at the 25 yard line of Westford. And that's where the Ghosts will take over for their first drive the second half. And now some flags fly as there's a little extracurricular going on between the two teams, a little pushing and shoving, and uh, well, let's see who started it. We'll await the referee's call. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Westford. Another personal foul penalty. We've had a few of those tonight, so that is going to uh, back up the Ghosts pretty deep. So this is a break for the Belmont defense again, Aram, if they can pin Westford back here. They'll get the ball back with some good field position. It's like Westford's starting at their own 17, 16? Uh, 12, I think. 12? Yeah, it's, I, I know, oh. I, I, I lose track of the yard lines too, but... Uh, it's inside the 15, so yeah, 12 or 13 yard line. It's saying 13 up on the scoreboard, so I guess we'll go with that. 10.09 to go here, third quarter. Hope you had a chance to uh, enjoy some of the uh, the volleyball stream going on uh, inside the uh, the Winter Field House, if that was still happening. Of course, you might have also stuck around at halftime and heard the Belmont High School marching band always doing a great job. Playing a lot of classic tunes from Days gone by, there's a uh, first down run for uh, Wilson, Alex Wilson. And he will pick up 
Pick up about eight yards. Going to call it second and two. One of the uh, stats uh, that the uh, Boston Globe had in their preseason capsules is we have a second down run here by Jake Cullen. Cullen's got the first down for the Ghosts. So he picks up about three yards. And actually, that's well timed because I was about to say something from the uh, Boston Globe preseason capsule about the Westford quarterback, Jake Cullen. Uh, coming into tonight's action in his uh, career at uh, Westford High as the starting quarterback, he is 15 and 6 as a starter coming into tonight. And uh, currently. His Ghosts have a 13-7 lead here early in the third quarter. And here's a, a first down pass in the flat to a Kyle. Ryan Kyle, and he'll have a first down running near side. He's uh, brought down eventually uh, by uh, Chauvet, but not before uh, Ryan, Carl, or Ryan Kyle, who started this game with a, a big kickoff return, as we've mentioned a couple of times. Gets enough for a first down, they'll uh, spot that at the Westford 38. <laughs> so far, the Westford skilled players are doing just a little bit more than the Marauders skilled players, and that's the reason why currently the Ghosts have a six point lead here in the third quarter. Well, the Ghosts have a lot more depth compared to the Marauders. Over 20 more players. Yes. Than yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, you're right. We, we talked about that a little bit at the top. Uh, the West. Actually, I don't think we talked about the Westford roster, but uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors on the varsity team total 54 to only 31 for Belmont. That could play a factor as this game goes on. Great play, though, right there by Sclafani to break up that pass looking downfield. And I believe that was uh, Quinn Reynolds again, who's quickly becoming a thorn in the uh, Marauders' side. as he caught that Hail Mary pass right before the end of the first half. Quinn Reynolds, who's kind of been on both ends of it tonight for Westford, dropped a deep pass, which should have been a touchdown, as he got way behind the Marauder defense, and then in a lot of traffic in the end zone, caught a Hail Mary for a score. Here's Cullen looking to the far side, and that ball is caught by Wilson. Wilson's got a first down, and he's in Belmont territory down to the 47 yard line. Westford chugging their way down the field. And again, uh, Cullen with a lot of targets to go to. He's got Alex Wilson, he's got, uh, as we said, uh, Quinn Reynolds, Ryan Kyle. According to the Globes preseason capsule, Nick's, Nick Russo was supposed to be a big part of the uh, offense. He hasn't done anything yet tonight. He's only been thrown to a couple of times and has not had a reception. Be kind of a little, a little scarier if he actually somehow starts getting involved in this game. First and 10 for Westford, and here's Cullen with time again, fires downfield. Nice defense there by J.J. Chauvet breaking that one up. It looked like they were looking for the uh, tight end downfield and uh, it'll be second and 10. Good defense there from uh, Chauvet to break that pass up. It was a tough play for Cullen. He was trying to throw into double coverage there. Once again, they're targeting Alex Wilson. Big player in today's game for Westford. A flag on Belmont, false start. Yep. Well, I, I believe if they're calling, are they calling false start? That would be, I yeah. think, on Westford, I, I think. No, no. I, they're calling offside, I think, on the Marauders. They jumped, or a neutral zone infraction. Somebody jumped there for the Marauders, so that, uh, We'll turn uh, second and 10 into second and five. It says third and five up on the scoreboard, but second down on the dial a marker, so. Uh, and here's another throw far side, and the pass is caught there. 
Looked like Annette, and speaking of, that was the aforementioned Nick Russo, who hadn't caught a pass until then. And he uh, gets another first down for Westford. One thing I'll say, Aram, about all these Westford receivers, they all seem to be tall. They have long arms, and uh, Broder's defenders definitely are, are, have a challenge here trying to, to cover them all. Making it a lot easier for Jake Cullen to hit his receivers. 6.50, 6.49, clock running here, third quarter. Westford leading by a score, 13 to seven. And Cullen again will uh, go to the shotgun with the ball uh, first and 10 at the Belmont 33 yard line. Cullen fakes the handoff, keeping himself, quarterback draw, big hole up the middle. And Cullen's gonna be close to another first down for Westford as uh, they have just got the uh, Belmont defense uh, caught off balance here and it will be good for uh, 10 yards and uh, move those chains for the Ghosts. Crowd here at Harris Field a little uh, pensive at the moment. Uh, Waiting to see if the Marauders can uh, make a stop here on this Westford drive. Cullen again in the uh, shotgun, Wilson in motion, and again, Cullen's gonna call his own number. Driving up the middle. And with the next snap, this will be the longest play of the drive. Play number 10 upcoming for Westford. Wow, okay. Good job keeping those stats uh, tonight. Uh, th thanks for doing that, Aram. I kind of pressed you into that duty uh, just before we came on the air, and you're, you're doing a great job there, uh, keeping track of all the plays. Uh, that was uh, Harrison Carlson uh, who finally made the tackle after about a four-yard gain. And here's a pass out in the flat. That's going to be caught far side, and first down for Westford, and... Was that number four down there? I think that was number six. Is that six? Oh, so it's Kyle again. Okay, I was going to say if it was... Yeah, it was Kyle again. Okay, I was going to say they, they have a number four on the roster, Nathan Anderson, a senior. I, yeah, these numbers are a little difficult to write. They kind of have a, a bit of a skinny font. Sometimes not easy to pick them up. Pass to the near corner. Looking again for Kyle, and that's going to be incomplete. Sclafani in coverage. Ball well uh, out of the end zone, so it's going to be second down. 5.03 to go, clock stopping on the incomplete pass. Big stand here for the Marauders. Would love to be able to hold Westford out of the end zone. <laughs> I believe uh, Westford now spelled correctly. I guess uh, our uh, our producer and exec our executive producer wants to apologize for the earlier spelling error for Westford. I told him at least you didn't say Westboro. That would have been a lot worse because that's a completely different town. <laughs> that would have been disastrous. I think missing by a letter is not that bad. But, he, but Jeremy came down and told me at halftime he felt bad about it. So to anyone in Westford watching, uh, I believe we now have your... Uh, Community spelled correctly as we have a timeout taken by Westford, W-E-S-T-F-O-R-D. Again, we told you they're out on Interstate 495, which uh, to most people that are from Eastern Massachusetts, it's called uh, the West Coast, because that's kind of how people around here, you know, when you, you live in the Belmont, Boston, you know, inside the 128 belt, uh, everybody uh, thinks uh, 495 is oh that's got to be that's western mass or is that new york or something no it's it's about 25 miles west of here and that is where you will find westford academy it is an actual it's a high school they go by westford academy i think that's just a name that goes back uh traditionally um because it almost sounds like when you hear westford academy it almost sounds like it's like a private school yeah. or something but it, it's not it's actual uh it's actually a public high school located out there in the uh, 508 area code, I think, either 508 or 781. I've been a little while since I've been to Westford, so uh, I do not know what area. Actually, the last time I was there, they might have been in a different area code. That's how long it's been. Here is a uh, walk in the park for quarterback Jake Cullen as he scores 
Westford a touchdown, and that will increase the lead to 19 to seven with just under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Real clock-eating drive, took over five minutes off the clock. Sure did, Aram, and uh, that drive started back, uh, yeah, Westford was back here at their own end, too, so that was another long drive that will finish with a uh, score. Looks like they're gonna go for two here, which would make sense, up by 12, trying to go by a 14. Throw to the far corner, I believe the receiver's out of bounds. That time, it was a little easier to spot uh, that the receiver was out of bounds, unlike Logan's play in the first half, which I thought was inbound. So the teams are gonna come back upfield, 4.58 to go here in the third quarter. It is now Westford 19 and Belmont seven. And the Marauders offense really gonna need to start picking things up here in the second half, Aram, as uh, they now find themselves down by two scores uh, after Jake Cullen literally just did another quarterback draw. He had about three or four of those on that drive and all of them looked pretty easy. He was like guaranteed six, seven yards every time he ran up the middle. He found some kind of hole in the Marauder defense, took advantage of it, and Westford's got another touchdown. Offensive line was really helping them. Um I think you're right. I think there was yeah. some strong push there. He's helping Jake Cullens out there. Yeah, well, uh, I know some of the members of the Westford offensive line include uh, 73, Henry Babineau, uh, also uh, one of the senior captains, Chris Zato, number 77. Uh, Jack Nelkin, another uh, Westford captain, number 55. And uh, Shane Clark, another senior captain, number 52. Both, uh, both Belmont and Westford, uh, have six captains this year, six, uh, well, in Westford's case, they're not all seniors. Uh, Alex Wilson, number one, is a junior. Here's the kickoff uh, from uh, Chris Sell, number seven, kicking off that time for, uh, for Westford. Austin Lasseter, far side. And this time, he will not be able to get a return up to midfield, but he is across the 30, and Belmont will start in some decent field position at about the 32-yard line. 4.50 to go third quarter, and Rodgers down 19 to seven. Looking to get the offense uh, going here. Whether it's uh, Adrian Garung breaking another big run or uh, Jaden just kind of getting the ball distributed, getting some, uh, maybe uh, some more receivers involved. Brian Logan who's had a big game already for the Marauders and has their lone touchdown, the 12 yard reception. He's split here to the near side. And Lasseter's gonna go in motion to the far side. It's a fake to, no, I actually, I think this time, uh, boy, Arno sells that fake well, Aram, because every time I, I think he's either gonna keep it, hand it off to someone else, that time he did give it to Lasseter, who didn't get a whole lot on the play. You never know until you f see which player has the ball at the end of the play. Yeah. Exactly. No, he's, he hides it well, but he doesn't hide it well enough apparently from the uh, Westford defenders because that time Lasseter running, uh, he was kind of running east-west instead of north-south, unfortunately got uh, tackled right at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and ten. And this time three receivers are split to the uh, near side. Or actually two receivers, that's... Uh, Garung lined up to the right of quarterback Jaden Arno. He'll look uh, far side again over the middle. That's uh, That time it's uh, Bryce Hubbard, who's been a uh, decent secondary receiver here tonight. Gets about six or seven on that play. I think they're gonna give him six. With third down upcoming, uh, Rodgers need to get to the 42 yard line for a first down. Third and four. Big third down as uh, looks like Westford may be showing a blitz here. There's someone just rushed up to the line on the outside and Jaden Arno looking uh, to the sideline trying to get the play from Coach McCray who apparently is uh, uh, getting help from the offensive coordinator this year on uh, some of the uh, play calls. Pass over the middle, that's gonna be caught by Holway. Donovan Holway. Making the catch for a first down. I believe that's his first catch of the night. I think they've thrown a couple times in his direction, but that's a big first down for the Marauders there, Aaron. Keep the chains moving. Marauders need to keep the offense in a uh, positive direction, keeping those chains moving. 
And here is uh, Jaden Arno once again, now at his own 45. Looking at his wristband and then also uh, giving the, uh, the signals to his teammates. Logan is split near side. I think that might be uh, Holway now on the far side. And this time uh, Arno flushed out of the pocket and he will keep it himself, get out of bounds at the 48 yard line for a gain of three. Arno always seems to find a way, most at least most times, to uh, get something out of nothing. Picked up three yards there after getting flushed out of the pocket. He's really showing off his legs today. He's a dual threat for sure. Uh, senior quarterback, three-year starter for these Marauders, uh, Jaden Arno at the QB position. You're doing well if you can get a, a quarterback to start three or four seasons at the high school level. And uh, Jaden Arno, of course, in a long line, his older brother, Avery Arno. Arno family, uh, a very uh, bunch of talented athletes. Timeout called by Westford. Yep. The Ghosts do take timeout here with a 2.23 to go third quarter. Big drive here for the Marauders. We need to try to answer. By the way, I think we got a, uh, an anonymous text, uh, Jeremy. Uh, the spelling could still be wrong, I think. It's W-E-S-T-F-O-R-D on Westford on the graphic. Okay, someone someone's saying it's W-E-S-F -E on your... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, no, it, it's it's West and then Ford. It's, that's... Yes, it's Westford. Okay. Good old, what? West like the direction, Ford like the vehicle. Exactly, that's what I thought. That's, that's exactly what I thought. West like May West, Ford like uh, Gerald Ford. How's that for some uh, some historical references there? And if you know who May West is, then you are definitely uh, in uh, the higher demographic of uh, our, our viewers tonight. Here is Arno at uh, third down, a big third down play here, and Arno's keeping it himself looking, but he's not gonna get the first down. He has stopped at midfield. That was actually a second down play. Now oh, was it, it now is it's, third down. Oh, I'm sorry. They have the dialer down on. Did they, did they have the dialer down on three? They I had thought. it on two. Did they? Oh, okay. We'll take a three. My apologies there. Thank you, Aaron, for. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, Henry Arnold's uh, was in there making the tackle among several ghost defenders. So it's going to be third and five here. Ball right at midfield. The Marauders have to get to the Westford 45. So big third down now for Jaden Arno in the offense. He's gonna roll out now some pressure, fire and pass caught by Austin Lasseter. I think he's gonna be short of the first yeah. down though. Bringing up an interesting fourth down call for Marauder coach Brian McCray with Belmont down 12. And, and they have the ball in Westford territory. They're gonna keep the offense on the field well, I, I think this might be the right call here, Aram. I, I think in, given this spot in the game, uh, we're down inside uh, two minutes in the third quarter. Marauders are down two scores. Have some decent field position. Also seeing how productive Westford's offense has been. That's also true, and they're gonna get the first down. Adrian Garung with the carry, and he'll have the first down inside the Westford 45-yard line. Big fourth down run there by one of the six Belmont senior captains, Adrian Garung coming off a 1,200 yard, 11 touchdown season in his junior year. He had a uh, had a touchdown run last week too and Belmont's only points in their loss to Shashin Tech. Balls at the 44, first and 10. For the Marauders and first I think we're gonna have a timeout. No, false no, sorry. start. No, you're right, false start, okay. 
Just to update you on the timeout situation, which I guess has been changed, used to be uh, that you would get, in high school football, you'd get five timeouts a half, three fulls and two 30 seconds. They dropped the 30 second timeouts now. This is not basketball. So they said, no more 30 second timeouts, only full timeouts. And so you get three a half, just like they do in the NFL and in college, three timeouts per half. And uh, so uh, you really do want to save those now. You don't get the extra, you don't get the luxury of those extra timeouts. So you, you want to save them for the end of the game uh, if you need them. And uh, the way this game's going, Marauders probably will need those timeouts come the, uh, the fourth quarter. Currently trailing by 12. First and 15. And here we go. And all, a quarterback draw designed for Arno. He's still going. And he gets about, uh, he gets back the penalty yards and then some. Down to about the 40-yard line. Bring up about a third and six coming up here. Second. Second and six after the penalty, sorry. That one I knew. You're right, Aram. That was a <laughs> Second down and six here. Uh, as we're down inside the final 30 seconds, this might be the last play of the third quarter. So Arno once again in the shotgun. Logan and Lassiter split to the near side with Garung uh, flanked to Arno's right. The play has been called and Jaden's back to throw. He comes near side looking for Logan. Pass is high and you know it's gotta be high if it's over the outstretched reach of Brian Logan, who again goes about 6'2", 6'3", and has a wingspan that uh, would rival most uh, NBA centers, I think. Uh, okay, well, that's Power forward, maybe. <laughs> and that incompletion marks the end of the third quarter. All right, we've played 36 minutes. Uh, we've got 12 to go as we, uh, as uh, one basketball announcer around here likes to say, as we make the turn for home, the score after three quarters of play, the Westford Academy goes 19, and the Belmont High School Marauders seven, as the Belmont Marauders looking to improve to two and one on the season. And we'll need a fourth quarter comeback if they are to do it here in their home opener at Harris Field. Glad you could join us on uh, belmontmedia.org slash public TV. My name's Todd Bloniars along with uh, Aram Parnagian and our uh, executive producer and cameraman tonight, Jeremy Meserve, who I believe now has Westford spelled correctly. He's, uh, you know, they say third time's the charm, right? <laughs> W-E-S-T-F-O-R-D, -E West and Ford. That is the place to be. Actually, Westford, uh, when I think about it, Westford's uh, out on that 495 belt. I think it's out near like Stowe and Bolton and some of those other places where, uh, you know, at this time of year, a lot of people like to go to, uh, for apple picking. You know, you got the, all the apple orchards out there. Pick up a, you know, bottle of cider. Some uh, some of those cider donuts. You a fan of the apple cider donuts? Yeah, I find them to be quite yummy. Yeah, they are. They are pretty good. I would agree with you there. Has oh. to start the fourth quarter. <laughs> big third down coming up for Belmont. Yes, uh, as we get back to football here on this uh, Thursday evening, which is two days before the official start of the uh, autumnal equinox. Although if you want to see the official start, it's going to be in the wee hours of the morning, so you uh, probably be better off sleeping through and let your friends tell you about it. Third down and six here. Marauders have to get to the Westford 34 to get a first down. It's going to be a handoff to Garung. He's got a nice hole up the middle. He's got the first down. He's inside the Westford 30-yard line. And now Adrian Garung starting to pick up some big runs for the Marauders. He had the big 60-yard run in the first half with probably close to 100 yards rushing over all that half. And now here, a fourth down run and a big third and six conversion there for about 10 yards. So here is uh, first and 10. And again, Jade and Arno uh, getting the plays from the sideline and giving them uh, to his teammates. Ball is at the Westford 30. Arno's going to look to the end zone, and he had Austin Lassiter. Uh, but he overthrew him incomplete. Lassiter uh, could not get there in time. So it'll be second down. But it looked like uh, Lassiter had the defense beat on that play, Errol. He did. Wide open. They forgot about him. I would think Westford's defense at this point is probably trying to zone in on Brian Logan and make sure he doesn't... Uh, produce here so that will leave guys like a perhaps uh, an Austin Lasseter or a Bryce Hubbard 
or maybe even a Donovan Holway uh, open uh, for some uh, key receptions. And back to Garung they go, and he'll uh, pick up maybe seven or eight yards. They'll bring up a, uh, another big third down uh, for the Marauders. And what really now you look at it, down 12 here, we're in the fourth quarter. This is four down territory, especially given the uh, position yeah. on the field. Long drive, 12th play of the drive. Got to come away with points here. 12th play, wow, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that, Aram. They need to... Seven minute, seven minute drive. Yeah, that too. Third and three here. But again, the Marauders, uh, certainly as the cheerleaders exalt uh, for us here at Harris Field and trying to uh, get the crowd into it, getting uh, hopefully getting the Belmont offense into it. Again, you're looking at really two plays here to get three yards and get that first down. It'll be a handoff to Garung. And oh. Garung does not get it. Arno took it himself. Oh, no, Arno took it himself there. Again, I got faked out. Oh, how do you like that? It looked like he got it to, to Adrian Garung, but it was number three. Jaden Arno kept it himself. Once again, Westford's defense not fooled. And it's going to be fourth down. Looks like no, little to no gain. Now they're going to say maybe a yard. Looks like fourth and a long two or a short three coming up here. And a huge play. And now... Jaden Arno heads to the sideline. The Marauders are going to call timeout here. Ten minutes and three seconds remaining here in the ball game, or I should say at least in regulation. And the Marauders right now trailing 19 to seven. Have a huge fourth down play. What would you like to? What do you think? Uh, would you like to see called here? That, uh, I'd like to see maybe a nice short pass, curl route maybe, or you could even give it to um, Garung, who's been huge on this drive, picking up massive gains. Yeah, already had that one big fourth down run uh, earlier, so that, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, could be even something maybe, uh, you know, uh, you might see Arno try to like fake it to Garung and then maybe he rolls him almost, some, I don't want to call it a naked bootleg, but maybe something where he'll roll out uh, to the side and try to go away from the uh, Westford defense and uh, do something there. But obviously this is probably, this is, I don't want to say definitely the ball game, but again with you know, crucial. Yeah, it's a crucial play, no doubt. I mean, like you, like you just mentioned, Aaron, uh, before, this is a long drive. It's taken up over seven minutes, 12 plays. 13th, or 13th play coming up. Oh, yeah, okay. Here Longest drive of the game. Yeah. I mean, you got to cash in here, especially when you need points, which the Marauders do. So let's see what, uh, what the offense has here with fourth down and uh, a long two. Handoff, Garung, no, not Garung, check that. That's number 11 for the Marauders, William Hendrickson. Or no, what's that? No, well, that was Garung. Oh, it was Garung, I'm sorry, 1-11, okay. Another crucial Woo. run from Garung today. Wow, Garung with two big runs on fourth down on this drive. He also had a big third and six run for a first down. So he's had three runs on this drive, which has now gone 13 plays and has uh, produced first downs on all of them to keep the drive going. First and 10, Belmont at the Westford 17 yard line. Arno in the shotgun. Low snap. And pump he's fake. looking. Here he goes to the end zone. He was looking for Holway. Actually, Holway was down near the goal line. Again, the pass a little high and incomplete. So it'll be second and 10. Looks like a Belmont player, having some troubles, 75. Or is that 78? What is, what, is he injured or uh, I didn't? Like he was hunched over there, but. Oh, okay, well. He's all good, a lot of, everyone's well, tired be out. William Lockwood or uh, Zach Zadam, 75 and 78 respectively. Well, again, you know, as we mentioned earlier, Aram, they made the roster sizes of these two teams, Marauders, uh, their players have been forced to take a lot more snaps here on both sides of the ball. And, you know, you do wonder, especially this being a long offensive drive for everybody, uh, particularly those linemen. So uh, it, it can be playing a factor here. Jaden Arno keeps it himself. He's going to bust up the middle again. And uh, he'll get suddenly pushed back by a swarm of ghosts. He'll be short of the first down. I think it's going to be a gain of about, looks like they're going to give him about six yards on that. Ball down, uh, looks like around the 10-yard line. Yeah, third and three coming up. 
Um, the scoreboard's saying four. I think they might have to get to the six for a first. So we'll say third and four. Again, four down territory regardless, and uh, whether they make it here or not. And uh, Jaden Arno again looking to the sideline. He gets the play. He relays it to his offensive line and uh, to his receivers. Running back, Garung is flanked to the right. It's going to be a rollout uh, to the right side, but uh, it eluded again. Great running by Jaden Arno who goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Marauders. Jaden Arno looked like he was going to get stuck at the line of scrimmage. And once again, not only showing uh, some uh, some great running, but some nifty footwork to elude tacklers and get into the end zone. That's a 10-yard touchdown run for Jaden Arno, the senior quarterback and captain, exactly when the Marauders needed it to pull within six. 19-13 with 8.15 to go here in the fourth. 16-play drive, and it was crucial. Wow. 16 plays and the extra point by, I think that was Lassiter. Yes, Austin Lassiter boots it through the uprights. Teams come back up field. Three, uh, eight minutes, 15 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter with the score now. Westford 19 and Belmont 14. And an incredible drive, Aaron, as you pointed out, 16 plays. Eight minutes. Eight minutes off the clock. This drive starting in the third quarter and ending in the fourth with a Marauder touchdown, which they absolutely needed to get themselves back into the ball game. Now, now the defense needs to uh, make a big stop here and get the ball back for the offense once again. But uh, that was a very uh, big drive. Jaden Arno finishes it off, but let's not forget the unsung hero maybe on that drive, Adrian Garung. Three big runs, all for first downs, one on third and six, and then two on fourth down, each time coming up with the first. The one thing you might worry about is, did Belmont take off too much time? Have they left themselves enough time to come back? Well, and that's the question, right? I mean, that, a drive like that taking eight minutes, you know, obviously if you know they make the stop here defensively and they get the ball back, they're gonna have to score faster than eight minutes. Uh, they're gonna, you know, and obviously Westford defensively is trying to play it that way. They're giving them, they're giving the Marauders a lot of the underneath, or they're gonna give them running plays as long as, you know, the Marauders can't break one, which is what they're trying to do. Westford just, trying to keep them uh, inbounds and uh, you know maybe just picking up a few yards uh, a carry. Here comes uh, Ryan Kyle on the return. He had the big return to start the ball game. Doesn't get as much here, but he does get across the 35 yard line. And that's where uh, the ghosts of Westford Academy will start this drive. We have 8.07 to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, glad you could join us if you just joined us here for tonight's broadcast of Marauder Football on VHS Sports TV. Where the heck have you been? Because it's been a, a pretty wild game, especially since about the last minute of the first half. Game's really picked up ever since the start of the second half. And then the Marauders capping off an eight minute, 16 play drive, which uh, I think was somewhere again in the vicinity of about uh, 80 yards. Marauders uh, finishing that off with a 10 yard touchdown run by quarterback Jaden Arno who now has a touchdown run and pass in this game. Here's Jake Cullen, he'll hand it off. And uh, Westford has not done as much with the running game tonight. They do nothing there thanks to Jadia Chauvet who makes the stop once again. He's been, uh, we've called this number a few times defensively tonight, Aaron. Indeed. So it'll be second down and seven. Second down, Cullen's gonna fire and the pass will be caught. It'll be good for a Westford first down. That was caught by number eight, Quinn Reynolds. He had the uh, Hail Mary uh, TD reception at the end of the first half. Comes up with another big catch there from the, uh, the junior wideout. So first down for the Ghosts. 7.27 to go here, fourth quarter, and Westford on top by five. Cullen pumps, and now he's gonna look deep downfield. Uh, too long, it'll be incomplete. Some good coverage down there by the Marauders. I believe that might have been Max Cornelius. 
Again, one of 18 Belmont seniors on this squad. Of course, the Cornelius family uh, have represented uh, Belmont Marauder football pretty well uh, the last several years. Actually, as I take a closer look, that might be Casey Regan, number nine. I thought that was number eight, but I think it's number nine, Regan. He is a sophomore. Second and 10 for Jake Cullen and the Ghosts. Pressure, Marauders are throwing it right at him and the pass is dumped off and it's caught by Quinn Reynolds and Reynolds slides right at the first down marker. They're gonna say he's about a yard short though as he started his slide a little bit before the marker. Big third down for the Marauders. Wow, they're saying he's two yards short. I think this is, this, unlike the Marauders, they had a fourth and a long two. I think this is third and a short two for, uh, for Westford. And like you said, Aaron, this is a huge, big uh, defensive play up coming here for Belmont as they want to get the ball back. Clock continues to run. 6.45, 6.44 to go here in the fourth quarter. And it's going to be, yeah, sneak? QB keeper and Cullen. The hit made there by uh, Chauvet, but not before. Cullen gets a first down for Westford. That'll keep the clock running, too, after uh, they move the chains, which they do. 6.22, 6.21, clock running. Ball now at the Belmont 34-yard line. Rodgers... Uh, have those three timeouts right now. Actually, check that, they used a timeout early, so they have two timeouts. They had to call a timeout on that last drive, so only two left. Big spot here. And here's a pass out in the flat. It will be caught there, bouncing off tackles. I think that was Kyle over there, Ryan Kyle, who will get about a yard or two. More importantly, from his perspective, he stays in bounds, which will keep the clock running even though he only gained about a yard. And now there's a... Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I thought, a, I thought there was a flag on the play. I didn't see a flag, and... Uh, Riders might have hoped for a flag only because it would have stopped the clock. Instead, now we're under five and a half minutes to go. Second and nine. Cullen now looking like uh, the Ghosts are running a bit of a tighter formation as they're content to run and kill some time off the clock. Cullen going for the first down marker on the far side. I think he might have gotten it. I think he also went out of bounds though, which... You're right, and that uh, that actually helps the Marauders, although the first down doesn't because uh, it's a new set of downs for Westford, but uh, the clock did stop. No, nope. well, actually they're saying he didn't get out of bounds. They, they started it back up when they moved the chain, so four... Well, are they? Yeah, no, I guess, okay, the officials don't seem to be questioning that the clock is running. Now under five minutes left in the game. And now, uh, more importantly, the ball's now all the way down at the Belmont 23-yard line. And again, you're in that part of the field where you're probably looking at uh, Westford thinking they're gonna take, you know, four down territory. And all they wanna do is just keep the ball as long as they can. They try the uh, the old college sweep right to uh, Alex Wilson. He'll get yardage and he'll stay in bounds. And the clock continues to run. Tick, 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 tick. 4.15 to go and the clock continuing to run. It'll be second and five. Ball at the Belmont 19 yard line. And Westford taking their sweet time getting ready. Oh yeah, they're gonna use every second of the play clock here, Aaron, you can bet on that. Just under four minutes left in the game. Coach Bruce Rich is uh, making sure that they're gonna run that play clock down as far as they can. Of course, we don't see the play clock here. It's being kept by the officials. Cullen in the shotgun. He'll throw it in the flat. It's caught out there by uh, Kyle again, I think. Didn't get much, but Marauders make the tackle, but clock is gonna continue to run here. Saying loss on the play, and I think now our we have an official's timeout because we have an injured Westford player down on the field. Oh, an injury! So the clock will stop with 3:29 remaining here in the fourth. Uh, I would 
think that was in the area of where the pass was caught by Ryan Kyle. That could be number six down there, although we're not currently being surrounded by his teammates, so uh, we cannot tell. And uh, he will uh, need some assistance off the field. I think that was Kyle. And he's no, I think that's Quinn is that, oh, is that Reynolds. Reynolds. Oh, was that eight? Eight, yes. not six? The eights and the six look a lot alike on these uh, Westford jerseys, uh, Aram, I got to admit. Uh, well, that uh, either way, both Kyle and Reynolds have been very effective tonight for Westford. Uh, so that's one less target for uh, Jake Cullen to look for. However, uh, at this point, I think uh, Westford might be content trying to just run here and continue to take more time off the clock. Clock running again. 315, 314, tick, tick, tick. It's going to be a rollout by Cullen. He's going to fire. The pass will be caught. And uh, Wilson gets out of bounds, but not before he picks up a first down. So the clock does stop. That's a plus for Belmont. What isn't is that Westford gets another first down. Piecing together a great drive, already 10 plays. And uh, this is exactly what Westford uh, came into this drive and what Bruce Rich was looking for. Not what the Marauder defense needed to do here to try to get the ball back. Westford 19, Belmont 14, 308 to go. First and 10 at about the, uh, just outside the Belmont 11 yard line. And of course right now this is definite four down territory for the Ghosts. I don't even think they would dare try to kick a field goal in this spot, whether they have a kicker or not. And a field goal would only put them up by eight, which means the Marauders could still tie with a score. Going to have a gang tackle there. So the clock continuing to run now inside of three minutes. That was Wilson on the uh, carry and uh, no gain, second and 10. Well, Aram, you brought up the great point. I mean, that last Marauder drive, although successful, it resulted in a touchdown, and it was impressive that you know they were able to put 16 really solid plays together. It did take eight minutes off the clock and left the Marauders in a tough spot, uh, where you know they were going to have to stop, make a stop defensively to get the ball back. And Westford getting this ball back, it was about eight minutes left in the game or in this fourth quarter when they got the ball back. Now we're under two and a half. Second and ten. Cullen throws incomplete doing the Marauders a favor as he was looking in the end zone for Nick Russo, or right near the goal line, but really uh, that pass well over Russo's head and it stops the clock with 2.16 to go. I don't think Bruce Rich very happy about that particular call. I mean, I would almost think at this point, given that we've seen uh, Cullen do a lot of quarterback draws, I would think Coach Rich here would probably just be happy to let Cullen keep it himself and try, try to run with the ball even if he doesn't get any yards, he's taking time off the clock. And a massive third down for Belmont here. Got to get off the field. But it's really two downs because you know on fourth, if they don't make it, uh, Westford will go for it. Pass on the flat, caught, and that's spinning around upfield, and it will end up in a touchdown for the Ghosts of Westford Academy. That's Jesse Moran, I believe, number five. Junior running back, caught the little... Uh, Short pass in the flat and then just uh, eluded tacklers and made his way to the end zone. And once again, it's a two score lead for Westford, which is 207 to go. Pass three drives, three touchdowns for Westford. That's right, it's starting with that Hail Mary to end the first half. Rodgers defense has not been able to make the stops here, uh, well, since the end of the first half, but particularly in the second half. Two long time consuming drives, both ending in touchdowns for the Ghosts. And the extra point up and good. And that will put the Marauders back down by 12 with just 127 seconds remaining here at Harris Field in the home opener for the Marauders and not the uh, ending they would have hoped. And really, I guess, boy, if there was a turning point in this game, Aaron, it had to be after the Marauders scored late in the first half and then allowed Westford to score on the Hail Mary to, put, to give them the lead going into halftime and then the second half. Yeah, really, it's been, uh, Marauders were stopped on the, they had the ball to start the third quarter. They got stopped, but then Westford got the ball, drove and scored. Marauders got the ball back, drove it and scored. And then, like you said, three consecutive drives now have all ended in touchdowns. They've all been like long six, seven minute drives to boot. 
Westford's offense in the second half, two long drives, a 12-play drive, and now a 13-play drive. Wow. Yeah. That, that's going to do, I mean, that that's really right there. Uh, uh, spooky times. Marauders being haunted by these ghosts tonight for sure. Westford uh, with an impressive-looking offensive display uh, led by their quarterback, uh, senior Jake Cullen. One of their captains came into this game with a 15 and six career record as a starter. Looks like it's about to go to 16 and six and Westford about to improve to two and one on the year. And for the Marauders, well, doesn't get any easier after this with the uh, Middlesex League Liberty Division schedule starting in earnest. And uh, Marauders uh, with a trip to Winchester next week. The uh, black and red uh, came into uh, this week's action two and oh. And uh, could be remaining undefeated when the Marauders face them next week up in Winchester. Timeout called by Westford. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. That's uh, <laughs> maybe uh, there was some uh, indecision about whether they wanted to kick deep or to squib it. I, I guess Coach Rich wants to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of what they are going to do, whether they'll kick deep or not, and uh, everybody's in the right coverage spot. Certainly uh, wanting to avoid a big return by the Marauders, who now, with just two timeouts left, and again, just over two minutes remaining, they've got to score quickly. Uh, no more no more 16-play drives are going to uh, do it at this uh, stage of the ball game. They need big plays, and they've only had one today, and that was earlier in the game. Want to remind you, we'll be back, uh, BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football. We'll be back here at Harris Field in two weeks. Um, on, uh, I think it is October the, uh, I got the date here somewhere. Marauders, sixth. The sixth, thank you, Aram. Marauders will be hosting the Lexington Minutemen. That'll be the uh, Middlesex League Liberty Division home opener after they, again, we mentioned they'll be in Winchester next week. Here is the uh, deciding, uh, it is kind of a squibbed onside kick. Maybe Westford was hoping for a um, muff from Belmont. I but. think they would have been, but why don't you just kick it deep? But the worst that happens there is if it went into the end zone 20 yards. I mean, I, I, I know Austin Lasseter did have a big kickoff return earlier, but I think the percentages still say kick the ball deep. Now Belmont has the ball at midfield. I think, you, you know, Westford did the Marauders a favor there, which I don't think, you know, they didn't have to do, but hey, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Again, Marauders have to score quickly, and now they're 50 yards from the end zone needing two touchdowns. So it's Jaden Arno in the shotgun for midfield. Again, Marauders have two timeouts remaining. And down by 12. Low snap. Nice job by Jaden to get that out. It'll be caught near side. Brian Logan, he got out of bounds to stop the clock. Andrew Fenelon in, in coverage there on Logan. Gonna be seeing a lot of throw to the sidelines here in the uh, last couple of minutes, Aram. Uh, no question about that. Marauders wanna try to conserve those timeouts. So on first and 10, another throw to the sideline. Logan again gets out of bounds. This time does not uh, get a first down, but he got out of bounds, stops the clock. It'll be a gain of about five. And we have an official's timeout as there's an injured Marauder down on the field. Looks to be one of the linemen, I think. It looks like it might be number 78, Zach Zadam. Saw him earlier in the game hunched over. Zadam is a junior. Plays uh, both on the offensive and defensive lines for the Marauders. Marauders will probably need to get a sub ready here because uh, it does not look like Zadam is going to be able to stay in the ball game. We have 155 to go and a second and four upcoming for Belmont. And it's Adam needing a little bit of assistance from the uh, Belmont uh, coaches and training staff. Uh, hopefully uh, he'll be okay for uh, next week. We might have seen the last of, uh, of Zach tonight. 
But again, between you know the long offensive drives, playing the line, and then having to play the line on these long, uh, you know, scoring drives for Westford, he's, uh, there's probably a little bit of exhaustion involved in there too. Looks like the 8:45 is just running a couple of minutes late. Uh, the commuter rail uh, to our left here at Harris Field. Here's Arno. He's looking, and uh, now uh, coverage breaking down, and uh, Arno will get to the sideline, and he will get out of bounds, and I believe he got the first down. They're gonna move the chains. So a first down and a clock stoppage, exactly what the Marauders needed with 147 to go. Belma making good time here. Only have 147 left, but they're almost in Westford's end zone. Not end zone, in red zone, my bad. Well. Well, they're both, and they need to get they need to get to both quickly here, and uh, then uh, attempt an onside kick. But uh, first things first, get the first touchdown. Worry about the uh, the kick later. Arno going far side, looking deep. It is broken up. I'm guessing that was Logan on the far side. He was looking for down there. I think that was no, actually, Donovan you know, it was, Holloway. Yeah, it was Holloway down there. Okay. Yeah, they've been switching it up, and uh, kind of thought at this stage of the game he might have been. More apt to go to Logan. However, of course, Hallways had a couple catches here in the second half. And hey, if you're Jaden Arno, you're figuring, okay, Westford's defense is going <laughs> to zone in on Logan, so we're going to go to the other guy. Although some good coverage on Hallway as well. So it is a second down. 141 remaining at the 27 yard line. Hand it's a handoff to Garung who does not get a first down and also keeps the clock running. So Marauders need to hurry up, get back up to the line here. May not want to spike it here either because it's a third down and about four. You spike it here, it's going to be fourth down, although I guess it's academic because it's four down territory anyway. But it looks like Jaden Arno is going to call out the play. They're going to run a play here. 114, 113, tick, tick, tick. It's going to be a quarterback draw for Jaden Arno. Arno running, he's got the first down, and he'll get down to the 10 yard line of Westford. Clock will temporarily stop as they move the chains. But again, Jaden Arno and the offense are going to have to get a play uh, called here pretty fast because that clock's going to start as soon as those chains are set. Clock and is already started, just under a minute left in the game. Wow, and Marauders need two scores. Rodgers have two timeouts. I mean, they made oh, clock continuing to run here. Now down under 50 seconds. You either need to call timeout or you need to call a play here, but you can't really be in now, unfortunately. I think there was some communication issues and the Marauders finally called timeout. No, that's a timeout from Westford, I believe. I thought I thought I heard Al Gledhill say Belmont, and I, I don't know why Westford would have called the timeout there either. But the refs were pointing towards were Westford. They? Oh, well. I've seen them uh, do that sometimes too, but <laughs> I mean, maybe Al said Belmont because he figured, kind of like me, I think like all, most of us, that it would have been Belmont. Well, regardless, there's only 39 seconds left here. And uh, the Marauders need two scores, not just one. And a lot of time was kind of frittered away there uh, after Arno picked up the first down on the uh, quarterback keeper. I mean, at that point, I mean, the, it was close. Like you said, at that point, Aaron, they were just under a minute. They lost almost 20 seconds through that whole exchange. And right now, every second matters when the Marauders need to score two touchdowns. Clock running again. Here we go. And it's going to be a throw by Arno, and it's caught. Touchdown! Austin Lassiter! Jaden Arno, I don't know how he got that throw off. There was a defender right in his face. He just kind of flung it to the far side, and Austin Lassiter got behind the defender and scored the touchdown to make it 26, 25 to 20, no, 26 to 20, with 29 seconds left. I would guess that the Marauders are going to. Timeout called from the Marauders. Well, and again, I, Coach McCray doesn't look happy, or I think there was confusion whether they were gonna kick the extra point or go for two. It is 26-20, right? That's a yeah. six up there, right? So the Marauders are down six. I mean, you could go, for, I mean, I guess it's kind of academic whether you kick an extra point or go for two, because if you miss either way, 
you still need you need another touchdown, and you could still score a tying touchdown if you got the ball back somehow, and uh, then win with an extra point on the next. So it really doesn't. In some ways, it doesn't really matter what the Marauders do here because although obviously if they kick the extra point, then they can win by getting the ball back, scoring a touchdown. They wouldn't have to worry about any kind of. Uh, conversion afterwards. Looks like they're going to kick the extra point here. And that's that makes more sense. I mean, obviously, the higher percentage play, as long as you feel confident in your kicker, than going for two and, and you know, the chance you would miss that. So here's Austin Lassiter. Uh, oh. Except that, oh, the ball, it was a bad snap. So, unfortunately, Marauders now are forced to go for two and they miss. Isaiah Arsvalone was the holder for Lassiter, and it was a kind of a low snap. He got the ball, the ball went down flat. There was no way Lassiter was gonna be able to kick that. So Ars Falone just rolled out right, tried to find somebody, nobody was there. So the conversion is no good. Marauders are down six with 29 seconds left, and now we'll have to onside kick it and uh, come up with their best squib kick imaginable. Um, I'm assuming this is gonna be, well, this could be either Wyatt Sclafani or Austin Lassiter, because we've seen both of them kicking tonight. Although I think Lassiter's been working more mm -hmm. on the kickoff, so uh, I would tend to think this will be him. I'd say, well, maybe whoever can squib it better is going to yeah. be the one uh, to a kickoff here. Wow. They could have Lassiter on the hands team to get the ball back. Let's give the Marauders credit, though, there, mm -hmm. Aaron, because they didn't have a lot of time. They got the ball downfield. I mean, they might wish at this point they had those, like, 18 yeah. seconds back from that. Uh, 20. Yeah, when they, when they got 18, 20 seconds back. They could really use them at this point, but... I mean, if they don't recover the onside kick, it's kind of academic anyway. But to give the Marauders credit, they did get downfield, scored, still time on the clock, so they still have a chance here, which is all you can really ask for at this stage of the game. It was really Westford's drive that went all the way down the field that, you know, ate up about, what was it, about six minutes? Yeah. And that was really the kind of the big blow there and forced the Marauders into this kind of uh, helter-skelter uh, score as fast as you can. So they will kick it off from the 40. Going right to left here. Will we be seeing some stars here? I don't know. Let's, uh, that is Austin Lassiter. Let's see what he does. It's going to be just a short line drive into the middle. Ball bobbled but hung on to by the Westford return man. Ryan Kyle with that. Well, and he started the whole game off by uh, getting that big kickoff return, so maybe it's just fittingly appropriate from the Westford side that he would end the game by securing the onside kick attempt by the Marauders. One snap, and assuming nothing goes crazily yeah. wrong uh, from Westford's perspective, this game will be over, and the Marauders uh, come back, uh, coming up a little short. Uh, unfortunately here, Aaron, but uh, boy, what a, what a crazy second half. First half we had teams moving back and forth and just the offenses couldn't seem to get moving then all of a sudden now we got a flag thrown in here and uh, they uh, yeah up oh, okay nope. yeah so it's a penalty against Westford for an illegal substitution again kind of academic here I, I think the Marauders do have a time I, they might have one time out left which well, what's they, the point of using it? Well, right, I mean, unless you want to just make them try to snap it again, but they've also got the uh, the man back. I don't think they're probably going to. Yeah. I don't think Coach McRae will use the timeout. Clock continues to run. Let's see if uh, that's going to do it. I think both teams are heading to the sidelines, and, yeah, that's going to be it. Oh, the Marauder comeback uh, comes up short here tonight in a game that kind of started slow but ended fast with all kinds of offense. Long sustained drives, as you pointed out, Aram. Uh, back and forth to, uh, in the end, Westford just had a little bit more on the offense, seemed to maybe control the line of scrimmage a little bit more, especially when they had to in that second half. And, uh, you know, basically scored almost every time they had the ball except for that last drive in the second half. Uh, again, I got to go back to it here. I'm the real turning point of the game was that, you know, again, converting Hail on the Hail Mary to end the half. Because otherwise, Belmont goes into halftime with the lead. Instead, they don't. And then they're kind of playing catch up. Weston then scoring that second touchdown. They get up two scores, and there, there you go. I mean, Marauders were just put in a tough spot at that point. So, any final thoughts from you, Aram, on the, uh, the ball game here? Great effort from the Marauders to come back. Just came up short. 
That's all I gotta say. All right. Well, thank you, Aaron Parnasian. Uh, thank you very much for your for all your assistance. And I look forward to uh, working with yeah. you again in a couple of weeks here, uh, when the Marauders will be hosting Lexington High School. That's uh, Friday, October sixth, and we'll have it for you right here on VHS Sports TV. For Aram and our uh, cameraman, executive producer Jeremy Mazur, this is Todd Ploniars wishing you good night from Harrisfield. This has been a VHS Sports TV production. Thank you.